And welcome back to The Breakfast. We, as always, kick off with going through the major news stories, making headlines uh, every morning. And today we are doing exactly the same. We've invited to join us uh, and, of course, share his thoughts on them. Mr. Tunde Kolawole, uh, good morning and thank you very much for joining us, sir. Good morning. Good morning, good morning my brother. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. I'm starting this morning with um, stories from the Nation newspapers. Let's see what we can find over here and we can uh, squeeze you in to have uh, your thoughts on two of them. Uh, the first one there says, uh, labor to government, it will be insensitive to hike fuel price. Remember yesterday we spoke a little bit about the possibility of getting um, um, the price of petrol as high as 190 or 200 naira. Uh, labor to government says it will be insensitive to hike fuel price. Depot owners short operations. NNPC says we have enough uh, product. Also, kidnappers attack uh, funeral convoy in Edo State. Anambra and others. PDP governors tackle Uche Secundus. NIN to replace BVN, says minister. Uh, bank number not legal. That's interesting. Also, um, we have um, Naira overvalued at official market, IMF tells CBN. And Quara APC members file suit to stop registration. Seven uni lawing workers arrested. It's, it's very few stories on the uh, nation this morning. But I think we can, okay, well, there's him. Amoteco nabs 15 illegal gold miners in Ondo Forest, 19 suspects held. All right, so Mr. Kolawale, I think we can start with the labor and their reaction to the Nigerian government, um, or well, the you know possibilities of a petrol price uh, in increase. Um, what are your thoughts on that, and of course, um, your reaction also to labour? Well, I, I totally agree with people. Uh, I think that the is going to be highly on the part of the both the NSPC and the government to increase uh, oil price at this period in time. You and I do know that since the Guardian Administration came into government, there have been a series of increases in the fuel price. And if you recollect, these were the same people who told us that there was no subsidy on petroleum products when the PP and Dr. Google did not come one in power. So what has happened between the time they said there was no subject and now that they have uh, taken steps to increase the oil price uh, uh, several times? What we are seeing in my honest opinion is a punishment that is going to be inflicted on the Nigerian workers and on the Nigerian people by the insensitive people in power who are trying to follow for their profligacy, for their inability to manage the economy. What does it take for us to have the refinery work? After all, petroleum refining is not focused on it's also not inside. But our allies, the people in power, are not committed to working with the finance. I.e. that is to make the production of petroleum products. Because it is when they import them, they are able to take for their abroad, not just to start with that, but also for them to be able to buy property and engage in their domestic attacks. So I think they both are not right many Nigerians. To stand up to the NSPC and the government of the APC and Mohammed Buhari, to starkly oppose this new regime of increase in fuel prices. It is not only insensitive, it is callous, it is unreasonable. There is no justification whatsoever for it, especially in an era of uh, this corona pandemic, in which almost all Nigerian people are not doing anything. We are all sitting at home, we are not having any income. We have to keep a visit of welfare. You increase the risk for power supply. You all right, Mr. Kolawale. Yeah. 
you, you've asked a very important question there. You said, what would it take to get the yeah. refineries working? Let's turn now to, right. to the Daily Independent newspaper. It says, APC yeah. governors consider zoning presidency to north in 2023. Anusumbo insists documents recognize zoning between north and south. We still have that story here saying new crude oil prices raises fear of fuel price hike. Mortgage industry worsens Nigeria's housing deficit. Federal government's new policy may push innocent others out of Nigeria. Nigeria records 28,876 tobacco smoking related deaths annually. Nigerians, 13 Nigerians, contracted dangerous variant of COVID-19, says FG. Also, IMF asked Nigeria to collapse exchange rates, increase VAT, and Nigeria faces third devaluation in one year. And across all the papers, we can see an APC campaign, a massive campaign here uh, for their registration. But looking at these ones, Mr. Kolawali, would you like to address the, the one on the, the, the 2023 election, or, or which of them would you like to speak on this morning? All right. Well, let me quickly say that um, I'm one Nigeria who is speaking to Sony uh, since they returned since we put our independence in 1960, we have been rotating uh, five researchers, a military head of state, and then civilian president of one of But where are these they taking us to? To the best of my knowledge, they are taking us nowhere. All over the world, where you see societies and countries making progress, it is their best foot that they put forward. It is their best of human capacity that are trusted with leadership. Honestly, I don't really care where the presidency comes from, or where a governor comes from, or where even a councillor will come from. So God that is able to deliver the dividend of democracy, guarantee fundamental human rights, and the rule of law. So person who was president for eight years, he is a Yoruba man. What is the special thing? What is the unique thing that the Yoruba people say that they can it under the Obama majority? So the best of my knowledge, nothing special good to the Yoruba people. Jonathan was president, was vice president, and now that is in terms of governor and governor. What is the special advantage that was confirmed by the Bayer people from the South South people? When Yara Dram uh, now that even while he's in government, what can you say? The special advantage that they have compound the people. Yes, he may have appointed one or two things, one or two of his friends, or the factor from the north into sensitive and key positions. But are this translated into alleviating the poverty and general welfare of the people from the north? The answer is no. When people get into power on the platform of pride, on the platform of freedom, on the platform of freedom, on the platform of the sector of the country that they come from, at the end of the day, what they want to do is to use the power to convert benefits on themselves, convert benefits on their uh, immediate family, and then their friends, and then the nuclear family and war and, and it goes on like that before they remember the Nigerian people. Mm. You will recollect that before Kuali became president, new journalists were asking him, ah, after so many years of left power, as he said, of the way he wants to return to power, he says he wants to get back to power because he's fine now. When he was out of his power, his friends relation. And the family members are coming to him for one assistance of the other, which he could not keep to them because he was not in power. Because of the benefit can only be compared or can only be given to people when you are in power. All right. That is the kind of mindset we have been seeing with our leaders. Thought that we should not impose all these regional diversity, all this allocation of the power uh, to people. All right. Not to stand there, that does not mean we should not take care of. The principle of federal character as a sign in the Constitution. 
all gender equality, or even taking a long time. The disadvantage is able to be physically challenged. All right, Mr. Kola, we can't really complement the marriage. All right. Um, because of time, we need to, of course, uh, move to other newspapers. But before we leave the Daily Independent, uh, can you quickly, in less than a minute possible, talk about uh, the story about 13 Nigerians uh, contracting a dangerous variant of COVID-19? Um, do you approve and do you agree with the handling of uh, you know, the COVID-19 second wave so far? And, you know, could, could this, you know, have been avoided? No, I, I don't think it could have been avoided. When you see the psychedelic attitude of our people to this pandemic, in spite of all the noise in the media, in spite of what we have brought and all that, uh, most Nigerian people still don't believe that uh, this coronavirus is a reality. And I'm not surprised. There has been a kind of trust between the Nigerian people and the people government. They don't trust people in government very small. Because most of the people are in government, they are never honest in their business with the Nigerian people. The Nigerian people never trust them. They lie to them. That's the case of themselves and all that. So when they came with all the messages about the coronavirus and all that, our people really couldn't connect to people. They couldn't connect to people in power. The All medium right. of communication to is not wasn't the right thing for government to do. Simply because the medium they have been using is also a medium that can pass up. The junior dependent is not passing from there. They also use it to make money. So that's why you find the Nigerian people. They are not going to about Furthermore, our economy it's such that it is not a social economy. We have a very large informal sector in which people on a daily basis must go out to earn a living. Anytime that they don't go out in the morning, they will not be able to put food on their table. They won't be able to pay electricity. They can't pay their children to feed. And as far as whether there is corona or no corona, they are compared to go out in that. All right. In some other society, in order to keep people at home, they are paid stipend. They are a social benefit. They are right. a social um, benefit. Let's um, collect at this uh, uh, food to be able to sustain themselves. Okay, Mr. So um, Kala Wale. Yeah, let's um, uh, put a hold on the Daily Independent there. And you've made really, really strong points. I'm sure a lot of uh, people would agree with um, your perspective there. Let's move to the Nigerian Tribune. Um, and see what we can also find over there. Um, I can see something on uh, uh, negotiation with bandits. It says, no to negotiation. Northern governors must flush out bandits. Uh, that's from the Kaduna State Governor, El Rufai. It says, uh, Gumi peace deal was a waste of time. Sanu and Nasu strike grounds universities. And also, Femi Fani Kayode meets with Kogi State Governor. APC caretaker chairman. There's also rumors that he might be joining the APC along with um, some other governors. Amoteko arrests 15 illegal gold miners in Undo. Uh, Benway communal crisis. Military arrests 10 suspects. Recovers 16 weapons and ammunition. And also Oshun communal crisis. Death toll rises to six. Despite loans, Nigeria's socioeconomic conditions deteriorated, says the IMF. All right, so because of uh, the time that we have left, in the interest of time, let's quickly speak on uh, two of these. First of all, um, you can start with the, the um, um, words from uh, the Kaduna State Governor, El Rufai. No to a negotiation, northern governors must flush out bandits. What's your quick reaction to that? Well, uh, my reaction to that is whatever El Rufai says, I'd like to take it with a pinch of salt. Here is a young man who is well educated, whom we thought is highly civilized, whom we thought is the highest metropolitan, but who has not put some of the attributes that we are associated with them into governance. The state has become the most broadest, the most ungovernable, the most anarchistic state in the whole country today. Kaduna has become the center of kidnapping in Nigeria. 
and a refined type of the many states in states to bandits and cattle losses and full announcement. That's why all the money that they make available to the service chiefs and mothers. See, we can't find peace in thousand nine, the thousand Katuna. See, people cannot see with both eyes uh, closed in the metropolis in Katuna. So when it comes up recommending things and say some of these things, I will want to take you with the pinch of salt. They say charity begins at home. And he is going to remove the salt and somebody else's eyes. Must remove the stack in the phone that I post. Let a refined show good governance in Kaduna State before teaching the rest of Nigeria how to sustain peace and all that. All right. Um, so, finally. Uh, he cannot be said to us the way I'm now is a brother government to manage the challenges of um, mandatory. Uh, the 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 lawlessness of a uh, few full and young men right. that are causing chaos all over the country. Okay, finally, the governors are in the best position to manage the affairs of the respective states. All right, uh, Zune Kolawole, I, I want you to finally react to uh, the story on Femi Fani Kayode and his meeting with the Kogi governor. Uh, the, of course, uh, insinuations that he might be joining the APC. Um, with other governors. Uh, quick reaction to that in, in less than a minute, if we can, so we can wrap this up. Well, I'm trying to tell you like any other average Nigerian politician. They see political parties as the mere vehicle for the realization of their political ambition. You will know that uh, even though the man says they don't find things in the social media and the conventional media, but he doesn't appear to be a man of very strong principles. He doesn't appear to be a man who has a uh, who is committed to any ideology. And uh, when you take into cognizance his political issue, he's moved from one party to the other since the, since the time he joined politics. So if he's joining the APC, I won't be surprised for them. Politics is all about the um, realization of a political ambition, using whatever they think as available at any particular point in time. It is also a place to make profit, collect rent, levy charges, and install those days where you can easily make money. And if he joins the APC, good luck to him. Okay. It is for the Nigerian people to stand up to this clan who are pretending to be our desire to play politics the way it should be played. Thank you very and much, Sunday to play the way it should be played, then you don't vote for them. Thank you very much for your thoughts. Unfortunately, that's the much we can take at this time. Thanks we appreciate you coming me. on. You have a lovely day. You, you too, too, sir. Thanks very much. And uh, like you said, it's left for the Nigerian people to make decisions. Um, um, on certain politicians, you know, when they switch between, you know, one party to the other, you know, it almost seems like no party really has any ideology that people stick with, you know, they are vehicles to, you know, achieve certain goals. Um, and I'm sure a lot of people would agree with that. Yes. Um, but yeah, it's, it's where we found ourselves. Good morning once again. We, of course, will go on a short break. When we come back, we're going back in history and telling you some of the major things that happened today. Stay here.